Thank you all for coming today to see our presentation on the Bedwars Tips Remediation Project. Now, I'm Simon Pope, corresponding with many of you in this room. I'm the one that's coordinating all of the consultation responses, responding to lots of the consultation queries, and I'm a part of ERI. I'm joined also by Steve Williams, the director of ERI, and Steve Butler, who is our environmental consultant. Now, what we're doing tonight is a presentation. It's going to take around 45 to 50 minutes. It's split broadly into two halves. The first half is about the project, how we do reclamation, what the phasing of that reclamation is. And then the second half is my part where I've collated all of the consultation comments that we've got. It's not comprehensive, but it, certainly for you guys, I've tried to focus on lots of the comments that this community's made. And I want to address every single one of the comments or uh, questions or concerns that you have raised, and I want to do them individually. Now, with consultation events like this, certainly where there's lots of consternation in parts, it can get quite vocal. Now, we would appreciate, if you could, let us do the presentation, go through all the questions that we've, we're clearly showing here, and answering those questions, and also, we'll have a questions and answers session afterwards then. Now, what can sometimes happen is everybody's here for their own specific purpose. There's groups here who've been in the protest outside, and there's other people who are concerned as well who want to hear the full presentation. So if I can ask a favour, rather than interject during the presentation, feel free to interject when we have the questions and answers, of course, or when, we, when, we, when I'm going through my pricey of some of the concerns raised. But some people do genuinely want to see the presentation for their own personal benefit. And they might not be as vocal as others, but they do really need to hear what we've got to say. So without further ado, the first part of the presentation is going to be... Oh, is there? Yeah, we need to try and get them in. I was trying to shout quite loud. Can anybody well. move up, please? Yeah, there is room. There is room. Just come on in. Come on in. There's spaces. There are spaces. There are spaces. There are spaces. There are spaces. I really hope this feels secure. I really want to show this to the test. I really want to show this to the test. I really want to show this to the test. I really want to <laughs> all right, they're all in. Right, is everybody up the stairs? Get in, Adrian. No one's falling down the stairs. <laughs> We're safe. Don't fall down the stairs. So anyway, the first half of the presentation, as I mentioned, is going to be carried out by our, our director of VRI, Steve Williams. And he's going to explain a little bit about his background before the presentation commences and just where the history of broadly VRI came from. Um, so, Steve? So we'd like to uh, take the stage. Right. So, good evening. Thank you all for coming. Um, can you speak up? We can't uh, hear you at the back. Yes. Can, you, can you hear me? No. 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 Speak louder. You have to shout right. at them. We'll shout. Okay. We're ERI and uh, we specialise in the restoration of uh, coal mine tips. And we've been doing it for, well I've been doing it for four decades and approximately we do one each decade. These jobs are massive undertakings. They have massive um, analysis. We have uh, all sorts of environmental studies to do. And they take, from start to finish, around 10 years. This site um, roughly would last about five years of operations. It's already probably taken five years of hard work to bring it to where it is and there would be a five-year aftercare period when we're looking at the, the restoration site, making sure there's no slippage, no, nothing has gone wrong on the site, yeah. any bare grass needs replacing. That's the final five years. In the previous decade, we did a set of tips up here in, um, uh, between the Ebervale and Avatilleri Valleys. They're called, it was a six bells complex of tips, and it was tips from two mines, a mine in the Avatilleri Valley called Vivian, and a mine uh, uh, also at the bottom of the uh, Abitilleri Valley called Six Bells. Most people obviously have heard about Six Bells. And at that point, we did a, tip, a set of tips that were probably around four and a half million tons, 
the tips that I'm going to talk to you today, the bedless tips, they're about eight and a half million tons. In the decade before that, um, I did a tip in Poland, and uh, that was about 14 and a half million tons. And the, before that one, the last one was one back in the locality. We did one at Lanhilith, and if you want to go on your website or on Google and have a look at it, you'll see the, the, that site too. And you can see the six cell site. They're all reclaimed, and it's lovely green land today. Um, we are the only company doing this type of work. Um, uh, there, there were obviously coal companies around the UK, but we also not only uh, understand the coal side of it, but we also understand the environment. And we're almost equally environmental engineers as we are uh, uh, understanding how to move oil and coal. Um, uh, and as a consequence, we're the last people standing in the UK uh, who can do this work. And our history is that the, uh, we're the successor company to a big company called Ryan Group that used to do this work in Wales. And if you travel up the valleys, Ryan did about 150 to 200 tips in the valleys. And I was the director of Ryan's and I didn't do them all because obviously I didn't, uh, this, this, this work started in the 60s. But, um, but you know, I was involved in a, in a lot of tips. Um, so, Bedwars. Bedwars was opened in uh, 1909, or I think they started developing in 1909, started coaling around uh, 2012. Um, actually, there were mines in this valley, Wiley, Nine, Nine Mile Point, started sort of in the same sort of era. And the mines shut in 1985, and essentially there are two tips. If you go and have a look at the records, there are theoretically four tips because Gefili brands um, a problem with a, a reservoir at the bottom of the site as a, a sort of a tip site. And there is also another tip, a tip on the land where Bedwars Colliery was, which is actually in somebody else's ownership. And CCBC have no uh, role in that at all, and, and that is distinguishable from us. We don't have any role in, in that tip. Um, originally, and certainly in the time that I've been involved, um, there was quite a lot of public funds put into TIP reclamation. And, and really, everything starts in TIP reclamation, everything starts with Abavan. Because Abavan occurred in, uh, as you know, in 1966. And, and here we had a, a circumstance where there's some tips on a very steep slope, and uh, there, was, uh, a spr there were springs under the tips, and uh, it had been a period of very, very heavy rain, and the, the springs <coughs> were excessively loaded from uh, water landing on the mountain, so it was going into the mountain and coming back out, and eventually the tips liquefied and they slid down the mountain. <coughs> Obviously we had the tragedy. Immediately after Abavan, the coal board um, uh, had a, a, a massive purge to try and sort out uh, the, you know, the tips that remain in <coughs> Wales. And to give you some feel for that, there are around 2,000 tips in Wales, and you're probably aware that the, the SEDIV is chasing to try and get some sort of resolvement on these tips, but unfortunately it needs massive amounts of money. The SEDIV has asked the UK government for half a billion pounds to rectify the tip um, liabilities that lie around the Welsh valleys and slightly further into, into the west. And uh, they were refused. They were. They asked in 2022, and they were refused. I think within three months of, of requesting the money. Um, and I don't. I'm sure I don't have to tell you that funds for just about any public services are under incredible um, strenuous uh, uh, requirement at the moment. And you know nobody has any money. <coughs> in 2010, the. Caffili County Borough Council um, decided that they would try to do this job themselves. Um, and what, what they did is they did a lot of analysis on the tips, and they employed some consultants, and having done that, they went out to get some uh, inquiries and vendors <coughs> for a price to do the tips, and that amount came in at £30 million. And, uh, they didn't have the money, so they went to what was then the Welsh Assembly, and they asked for £30 million to do these tips. The Welsh Assembly also 
said they didn't have the money, and that obviously the tip viability remains. Um, it is unlikely that there is no sign that any money or funds are going to be available. And following the following the um, the, the effort by Gafili to look at this in 2010, they actually came to see the site that we were operating at uh, Six Bells uh, and Abitillery. Mm -hmm. They came to see that site in 2012 because they were interested in was it possible for us to do this job. And um, we had a look at it, and uh, I know this is going to be of interest to you all as the evening runs on, but the first thing we said to them was we can't see a way of getting the coal that we produce from the tips to pay for the reclamation, we can't see a way of getting that coal offside. That's what we told them at the time. And, um, but they were, but, but to be fair to them, they kept talking to us and we started over the years to start to look at, you know, could something be done with these tips. Here in Wales, back in the 70s and 80s, Public money was available, and it was available through really a couple of funding sources. The w WDA, when it was established in Wales, was set up uh, to do land reclamation because land, reclam uh, land reclamation coming out of the 60s, the, 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 the spoil across the hillsides, derelict mines, you know, was quite substantial. And actually, a lot of sites were cleaned up with the WDA, and in fact, the WDA invested in my company and we worked alongside each other to clean up tips in the valleys. And we also worked from another, over this side of the country, we had something called the Gwentland Reclamation Unit and it also contributed and even did an odd site, but uh, a small site on their own. So, you know, th there was a history of public funds coming into that, but right now, with you know, that money has dried up. And as regards to commercial activities to do this work, as I said to you earlier, we really are the last company standing. There's a, a, a main objective to tip reclamation today, and uh, tip reclamation techniques have changed dramatically from when the coal board immediately started to do some type of restoration after Aberfan. Uh, what the coal board did is it spread the tips with bulldozers and machines, all the tips around Wales, so that they compacted them. And the reason they compacted the tips, which you do by taking a two or three meter layer of spoil and rolling it with vibratory rollers and bulldozers, what you do when you do that, you stop water coming up from underneath. It seals the tip and stops it coming underneath, from underneath. And that was the main civil engineering technique that stabilized the tips in Wales. And, and even at Bedworth, I think sometime, I'm <coughs> guessing around the early 70s, it looks to me like maybe half a million tons of spoil was actually re-landscaped at Bedworth. They had another problem with it immediately afterwards, in that they had a fire on the tip of Bedworth. But I understand that, that took about three or four weeks to put out with the, um, with the fire brigade, but that's, how, that's what they did at, at Bedworth. Um, what we do today, we are looking basically, our, um, our, our, our um, environmental work is looking to try and generate the grasslands that would have occurred at any site before deposition occurred. Now, obviously, there's a lot of spoil, so it can't, the ground's not going to look the same. It's always going to be higher or width wise, it's going to be longer. But at the end of the day, the grasslands that sit on top, our efforts are all about trying to create the grasslands and the habitats that occurred before. And the way we do that is we excavate the soils beneath the tips as we, uh, as we excavate the tips, and we store the soils, we bring them back over, and then we plant them with the species that are fit for the valley environment. And, we, and there are companies, a company called British Seed Houses, developed a seed mix, especially for the Welsh Valleys, and that's the one that we use on the side of the valleys to try and recreate the, the habitat and the grasses 
that would occur mostly today, it's on the ridges. And there's a good reason why we work on the ridges, is that we made a decision 25, 30 years ago that we would never ever again put the tips on any slopes. Because it goes without saying that the slopes are hazardous and you will not find an engineer in the country now, any civil engineering, that would be prepared here or in any other mining um, operations around the world, decent mining operations, I probably should say, but any decent mining operations would not put spoil on an incline. It goes with the obvious thought, if something goes wrong, the spoil is going to come down the incline. Similar to what's happened at Bedwars, and it is still happening in Wales now. There have been two tips of slid over the last five years. Um, you have one in Caerphilly County Borough Council. You have one in Vokru, uh, which is um, uh, just be below Merthyr. That, that tip has slid. It is a big problem to the, the council, and they're trying to tackle ways of dealing with that. And it is a really difficult tip because it is very steep. Sat on a hillside, it's very steep, and it's a really difficult uh, tip to deal with. And there's also one that's heavily in the press at the moment, which is a Tyler Stan. Um, the tips in the Ronda have typically been quite troublesome. There's been quite a lot of problems with tips at the top of Tyler Stan, and there was one about two or three years ago at Paul. And so there is a lot of discussion around the Senev and, uh, and the county councils about how they're dealing with this problem. And deal with it, they are going to do. If they haven't got the funds today, they're going to hope that they get the funds sometime in the future. And I say to you, if you don't like me, that's fair enough. But these tips are going to get reclaimed because, you know, they are a danger. And they have been ranked, the Bedwars tips <coughs> have been ranked in the highest risk category in Wales. That's the call it category D. And you, uh, your councillors, your, your council is extremely worried about that. The Senate have recently done a complete uh, inventory or study of all the tips in Wales and they have classed these tips in exactly the same category. And if you've got other civil engineers, they will do the same. This is our last site and it's just a, a couple of photographs for you. There was a bank of tips, uh, you can see them on the left hand side, very standard sort of um, uh, uh, sort of triangular tips and uh, that is the tips that we now look in 2013. And on this site, um, there were, we decided that we would uh, restore the habitats in two different ways. The, the western side, western slopes facing the sun, there was a farm, and the farm, there were 120 acres of this site that were adjacent to the farm, and we converted the one part, the western slopes, into grazing land, and they're now being grazed by the farmer, and we created on, on the, on the uh, eastern slopes. How can we, that be the same full dog when it's mature trees by there then? Well, they've obviously been taken <coughs> from well, it's not obvious. Yeah. It's it's all, five years that? later. Well, uh, it's just, it's just a, a yeah. different photo than that. Five years later. Yeah, okay, right. no, I just want to point it out. Okay. Well, okay. There's mature trees there. Thank you. On the other part of the site, we restore the land to more. And that, and that today is uh, basically it's. Uh, acid upland grassland and, and, and the site that we restored there has actually got a hundred pairs of skylights in it today. So you know, we're very much, you know, our job is not just about moving spoil around, it's also all about creating the right environment, the right habitats for the future uh, wildlife and to try and restore them as best we can to what would have existed before spoil was put on the land. And we we, in doing that, here's typical, the reason I chose this photograph is you can see the type of subsoil that we have to work with. When colliery spoil is sat on the ground, there would have been, when they put it there, there would have been a 